We're going to be doing problem 1414 from the fundamentals of chapter 14. And uh, if you haven't, if there's your first video, look back at 1413, uh, which is the first video of this part of the chapter. Um, and, and we're introducing conservation of energy. Alright, so in the previous video, I said that the total energy, let's say total energy, one, has to equal to the total energy at state 2 okay which means if we look at this little diagram or this uh, assuming there's no friction because it's a smooth um, a ramp at point at this blue point the energy the total energy at a has to equal the total energy at point 1 has to equal the total energy at point 2 okay and you can kind of see how um, if we look at an energy graph, right, there's the energy graph. Uh, this is total, sorry, this is kinetic energy, and this is potential energy, okay? In a point A, right, there's zero kinetic energy, right, so zero, right, and it's all going to be potential energy, right? This is at point A. When it's at point two, right, and we look at kinetic energy and potential energy, now it has gained a little bit of, it's starting to move, right, so it has some kinetic energy, and this, you know, if we shave it off here, and then it loses some potential energy. Let's say it starts out with five units of energy, five units of energy. Right, so this is the first diagram. These are all the five units here. Now, let's say this is at point. Oh, sorry, at point one, it has gained one unit of kinetic energy, and the, all the, the, for the potential energy, we're going to have four units of potential energy. And at state two, again, it, let's say it gains another unit of energy, the kinetic term, and then the potential has lost yet another unit of energy, right? So now it has two, and this is three. The whole point being that if you start with five units of energy, at point one, you still have four, five units of energy, and at point two, you should still have five units of energy. That's conservation of energy, okay? So moving on, let's, let's look at this problem. Uh, the 2 kilogram package leaves a conveyor belt at A with a speed of VA equals 1 meters per second. So right away, it starts off with some kinetic energy and slides down uh, the smooth ramp. Okay. Uh, determine the required speed of the conveyor belt at B so that the package can be delivered without slipping, meaning the, the package has to match the velocity of the conveyor belt. Right. So there's no, like, uh, I don't know, uh, friction in between them that might cause them to slip and then also find the normal reaction when the curved portion of the ramp exerts on the package at B if rho B meaning the radius of curvature so radi radius of curvature at B uh, is 2 meters okay so in my videos I typically will write total energy as like this the book might do it differently um, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, so what this means is total potential energy, or I guess, uh, yeah, total potential energy gravitational plus total potential energy by a spring plus kinetic energy of the system at state one is equal to the po uh, total potential energy um, done by gravity at state two plus total potential energy of the spring at state 2 and kinetic energy at state 2 okay again we're not dealing with springs here so we don't even have to worry about these terms but if if you want to just begin uh, as you work through these if you just want to write them all down and then just cancel everything out that you don't need go go ahead and do that um, so let's start with the left hand side. What is the energy at state one? Well, I have 
again, the in the drawing, there, they gave us a coordinate system at B. So pretty much telling us that Y equals zero here. Okay, so that's your your zero potential line. Okay, so when we sum up the potential energy at state one, we're gonna do mg, right? The weight times the height, which is four. Okay, plus the kinetic energy of the box, which is remember kinetic energy is one half m v squared. Alright, plus nothing else. There's no other forces. We don't have friction, we don't have anything else. It is all equal to the potential energy of the box at B, which the height of B at which the height of the box at B is zero, plus one half MVB squared. Okay, and this is all we're looking for. Alright. So let's see. Uh, this goes away. Uh, the reason I don't plug in the numbers yet, because most of the times the mass, you're, you're going to notice that the mass always drops out. So the mass goes goes away because you can divide it out. Right? So now we're left with 4G LTE, just kidding, 4G plus um, 0 0.5. Uh, let's see. times 2, square root it all, I'm just isolating VB, okay, alright, so when you do that, let's see, um, calculate everything out, we should end up with a velocity of 8.92-ish meters per second, let me just double check that, times 2, yeah, 8.92-ish, or 8.915. All right, so that's one thing that we needed. All right, so determine the required speed of the conveyor belt at B. All right, so we found that. So the, the conveyor belt has to be moving at this velocity to match the velocity of the package coming down. All right, so we have that. The next thing is find the normal reaction um, the curved portion of the ramp exerts on the package at B. Okay, so let's let's draw a free body diagram of the package at B. Look at that box. Oh, let me let me put the. Uh, little little Amazon. Here's the Amazon package. Okay, and then now let's see. So what are the forces here? So the normal force that the the surface is exerting on the box, right? And then the weight. Okay, so normal force, the weight going downwards, right? So then I'm gonna sum similar to what we did before. In this case, we're, st we're still sort of in the circular path, so we're going to do the normal or tangential coordinate system. So the, um, so just know that, or as a rule of thumb, if, you're, if, you're, if your object is on a circular surface and they ask you for a normal or acceleration, you, you'll need to do your normal acceleration, which is V squared over R. Okay. We've gotten a lot of practice with that in chapters, I think, 12 or 13. We we really uh, nailed those things down. So let's see, what are the forces here? I have the normal... You know what? I'm going to switch colors. I have the normal going upwards. Uh, I have the weight going down. Right. I have the mass... I have my velocity at B squared divided by um, the radius of curvature which they gave us as 2 meters. Okay. 
So let's see. The normal is equal to. That's what I'm looking for. The normal. The normal is equal to m uh, eight point nine two squared divided by two plus mg. All right. So let's calculate all this out. When we plug everything in, we should get. Mm, I have uh, 99.19 newtons, okay? So the normal is 99, or just 99.2, okay? And that's it. So it's pretty, pretty, uh, it's a nice uh, way to tackle a problem. Um, you know, without doing kinematics, I didn't have to do like, um, you know, one half. What is it? G V. Oh no, V T squared. Sorry. You know, you don't have to go this route. Plus V initial T plus, you know, Y initial. You don't have to do the kinematic equations here. All we gotta do is conservation of energy and we're able to find the things that we need all right so I hope these first two problems really um, you know begin helping you guys uh, get used to these concepts and uh, I believe the next problem 1415 will involve a spring so we'll finally get to see it in practice um, and you'll, you you guys are gonna see how easy this is all right Thanks, uh, thanks for your attention, guys, and, and, uh, and your time. Uh, if you have questions, comments, just drop them down below. And don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.